Well, do you know what? This, <laughs> this feels like a significant statement from inside the England camp today. We're getting all the big hitters talking to the media. Harry Kane will be doing the news conference for everybody. Then you've got Declan Rice, you've got John Stone speaking to other areas of the media, the radios and the newspapers. So it feels like they're putting the big hitters up, the big guns, the most experienced players coming out and looking their critics straight in the eye. And they're going to tell us, I'm, I'm very, very confident, that they're very confident and that despite two very lacklustre performances, that there is no panic, that they're good to go from here. Um, I mean, look, all of the furore in the English media at criticising those performances, I've been a part of that. I think England have been very, very poor by their own standards. Um, I think the players are not panicking at all and they think it's part of a process where you build into the tournament. No panic talks, no special emergency team meetings, which I think have been suggested or discussed elsewhere. I'm told none of that has happened. Uh, it's just the usual debriefs after games for England to try and get better. And there are concerns about fitness of some of the players. Uh, uh, and the hope from Gareth Southgate and the rest of the squad is that they will build fitness and sharpness as the tournament progresses. The final of the European Championships is three weeks today. So I think the message we'll get from Harry Kane when we speak to him in just over an hour's time will be this is a marathon, not a sprint. We've been here before. We've had poor results in group games in the last two major tournaments. So no panic from, from their perspective. But key questions for Harry Kane, not just about England's performances, but about his own performances as well. I've said he doesn't look fit, he doesn't look sharp. Is he still struggling with that back condition? Does he need game time? Does he need to be rested and nurtured a little bit? All of those key questions for the England captain I think will be really, really interesting. He's due to speak to the media about 2.15 UK time, so as I say, just over an hour's time. As soon as he's up there, we'll bring it to you live on Sky Sports News, of course. His performances, Rob, have been criticised as well, haven't they? Uh, lots of question marks over his fitness, as you just mentioned there. But is there any question, do you think, that his, his place might be in doubt for that game against Slovenia? I can't see it. And, and look, we'll talk in a moment about what changes Gareth Southgate might make. I would, because England haven't guaranteed qualification yet, I can't see Gareth Southgate not playing Harry Kane. Assuming there's not, nothing more serious untoward uh, beneath uh, that, that back injury that he's, that he's had. But the fact that he's talking to the media today would suggest he's OK, he's good to go. Otherwise, the FA wouldn't put him up. So, no, I, look, I think Harry Kane will, will start the game. But how many minutes he will get in, I think, will be probably prearranged based on his attempts to try and get Matt Sharp. There's a really interesting graphic we can show you now which shows where Harry Kane has been playing in recent matches and look that was against Serbia and Denmark. Have you ever seen Harry Kane as sporadic in his positional play as that? Left back, right back, left wing, right wing, down the middle, central like a central defensive midfield role at time. Only three touches look in the box in two matches in the attacking box. That is very on Harry Kane-like. We know he tends to drop off and he's been doing it for Bayern Munich all season and take up the number 10 role a, a little bit at times. But certainly some of the, the media that I've been speaking to and some of the England fans want to see him staying up top more, be the hit man, be the target man. Let Jude Bellingham roam around and do that. that this is what I'm talking about with the balance of the England side at the moment. It's not quite right. It feels like Harry Kane, Phil Foden, Jude Bellingham are all trying to sit in the same areas and spaces on the pitch and maybe uh, taking each other's space away from them a little bit. So that's why there's been so much criticism, I think. But I've never seen Harry Kane as sporadic in his positional play as, as that graphic shows. And also, he's, he's struggled to keep up with play. If Bukayo Saka has made a run down the right, on a couple of occasions I've, I've seen him knock a cross in and Harry Kane's been 10 or 15 yards outside the box still. So that's a concern and something else we need to ask the England captain about. Everyone, Rob, thinks they can be England manager. You only have to go to the local pub to hear a range of, of views and, and the changes that they'd make for the Slovenia game. Apart from Harry Kane, are you getting any indication on what the team might be for that match? Not yet, not yet, because I think it's a very delicate situation for the England manager. Look, they've had a, a closed training session today away from the media. I think within the camp is now when they're starting to do specific preparation for this Slovenia game on Tuesday night. That's when they'll start building an idea. And, and Gareth Southgate will be talking to Steve Holland, his assistant uh, manager, about what tactics they might play, uh, what changes they might make. Some of those changes might be dictated by the physical condition of the players. How many of them can play three games in about nine days, which is what they going to be asked to do. Phil Foden, Bakayo Saka both started England's first two games. Can they go again? 
unthinkable probably that he might rest Jude Bellingham, even though I think Jude Bellingham looks tired and would probably benefit from a bit of a rest. But maybe Southgate's thinking to take those players off uh, as the game progresses, if, as he would hope, England are winning the game and winning it comfortably by then. I think there will be a change in midfield. I expect Conor Gallagher to come in for Trent Alexander-Arnold. But those other wide attacking positions, I think, are a little bit more nuanced and a little bit more uncertain, as I speak to you right now. More clarity over the coming days. But let's show you how Group C stands right now, because this will dictate a lot of what Gareth Southgate's decisions are. England can't take it easy, can they? They are top of the group, unbeaten, four points from those two games. But look, if, if, if they are not guaranteed qualification, as things stand right now. They need a point for that to happen. They need three points to be guaranteed top spot. And they will want to finish top, because if they don't, it, it, they're going to be playing Germany, almost certainly, in, uh, in uh, Dortmund on Saturday. Now, England don't want to be playing the hosts in the last 16. They're, they're hoping they'll play Germany in the final or the semi-final, much further down. It could be an early exit, let's be honest, in the form England are in right now if they come up against Germany that early. So it's important that England win, win well and win the group. But I think winning well is the key to this. Even when England... Um, beat Serbia in the opening game. They didn't win it well and there were, there were concerns and discussions about the way England are playing. Then you get the disappointing draw against Denmark where England could have lost that game very, very easily in the second half. So I think a win is important for qualification. A performance with that win and a convincing win is very, very important for England to get the England fans behind them again, get them believing and build a bit of confidence and momentum within the squad as well.